Hey guys, Morgan here from Paul's Fishing Systems. Here's a video that we took at one of our demos at Karatahi Beach. So for those of you who can't come along to one of our demos in person, it's a great virtual experience for you. Awesome. Well, um, first of all, welcome, um, welcome to the beach. Um, pretty awesome backdrop to be able to do a bit of mahi today. So I'm um, glad to have you guys all out with us. Uh, my name's Kays. This is Jamie on the camera. Um, but today we're going to be um, predominantly showcasing the FD1, uh, which is this drone here by Swell Pro, the FD1. We're going to look at the spry as well today. Um, and then I've brought the A22. I had a few people message about the Condor uh, A22 as well. So we've brought that along um, and we'll, we'll go through each of them. Right over here is an SD4. This is purely a, um, a demo sort of uh, model. So it hasn't got the battery, it's not the actual weight that you'll feel with an SD4, but it gives you an idea of the size um, and what it looks like. Very similar operating system to the FD1, so as you're watching the FD1 you'll get an idea of how the SD4 operates in that. Difference being the, the amount of technology that comes with the SD4, boat mode, um, and then being able to film in 4K with a 3-axis gimbal. So a bit of control over your camera. So just a quick blurb on the SD4. Um, what we'll do today is um, I'll start going through each of our uh, different setups. Uh, we'll break down our, our backbone, uh, the rods. Today we've brought out a bit of the Shimano gear. Typically we've been demoing with pen, um, showing, uh, showcasing the pen gear. Um, but we'll, we'll use, use a bit of the Shimano gear today. So you guys are VIP treatment. I've seen a Stella on one of the rods over there. So. Uh, <clears throat> Got to give uh, Jamie a bit of kudos for that, um, but a bit of different gear there that you guys can have a feel and a, a play with today. Um, we'll go through from the sinker all the way to the rod, the reel, and then how that applies to the drone. Um, and then at the end of each drone, what we'll do is we'll open it up for any questions that people may have. And then throughout the day, you're welcome to just come up and um, ask a few questions um, to myself or Jamie as well. Uh, but again, just a big welcome from the team at PFS. Awesome to have you guys here. Uh, we've got some fresh mullet as bait, and the uh, reason why I'm starting off with that note is um, bait is actually one of the most underrated parts of a fishing day that, that people can uh, often take for granted. So fresh bait is the best bait, and we, we always have a fresh mullet in the bin um, that we're going to be using throughout the day. So um, yeah, we've got fresh mullet that we're going to be uh, spooling up. On uh, two of our setups, we're going to be using uh, six hook backbones. And then on one of the setups, we're going to use the spry with a three hook um, setup. So that's, it's just custom to each of the drones. Uh, yeah, any questions on that so far? Not drone specific, but any, any broad questions about how the day's going to go? Yep, what you got, bud? Yes, we are, champ. Yes, we are. And then later on, if you hold on tight enough, we'll, we'll take you up the top there and you can get a photo of us. How does that sound? Yeah, he's keen. Okay, awesome. Um, yep. What sort of wind speed can they fly in? So that's a beautiful question. So the FD1 flies in up to 22 knots. Um, the Spry, I believe, flies in up to 15 knots, bro. Is that right? 15 knots. The Condor, um, 15 to 18 knots. Um, I won't tell you what I've flown my condo in because I'll get in trouble. Um, but yeah, 15 to 18 knots is what they recommend. Um, and the SD4 above the FD1. So I think that one's around that 22 to 25 knot winds. So you can get a pretty good range. Um, one of the things I will say, the payload compared to the wind um, versatility in them, the FD1 is pretty amazing. The, we went out to Muriwai how long ago, bro? Three weeks? About three weeks ago, we went to Muriwai. It was about 20, oh, it was about 25 knot winds, and um, we're like, let's go. We'll do a demo with the FD1, and you, you couldn't even, you wouldn't even know there was that kind of wind in front of the drone. So, um, yeah, I, I've got to say, I've been pretty impressed when it comes to the um, the, the FD1's wind tolerance. So, yeah, we'll we'll, we'll get into that one first up. Um, uh, good question. So, how far do we go out? Uh, a lot of the time. Fishing wise, I, I, I came up doing a lot of surf casting, so I, the, the old saying, fish your feet first, often sounds true. And uh, on a day like today, when the water's not too clean, um, just behind the breakers can sometimes be your best place to spot, uh, to start. But um, 
With, with the FD1, you can go out to 1,500 uh, metres, the Spry 800 metres, um, the SD4, is that 2K? 2, okay. 5K, 5 kilometres with the SD4, and then with the Condor, you've got 1,000 metres, and that's the A20 as well as the A22. Um, so there's a whole lot of different ranges, but typically you're limited by the amount of line on your reel. So no, no good having a, a drone that goes 1,000 metres and you've got 120 metres on your line. Um, because it's uh, it disconnects pretty quick. So you're going to using the winch today? Yes. Yep. Okay. So we're going to get the winch going as well. Um, on that one particularly, I think we've got two and a half. Two and a half. Yeah. So we'll, I mean, we'll put it out about a k, because um, I don't want to be here till tomorrow winding it back in. Um, but we'll we'll put it out, get that one out there as well today. What's that? What's that? Is that three hundred pounds? Yeah, three hundred pound line, and along the backbone of that line, there are sinkers oh, as well. Okay. Um, at the moment, that's a pilot, so we are testing the waters, but I, I had it with me in the 90 mile about a week ago. What's that, sorry? Do you use the FD-1 for that? Yes, oh, okay. yep, yep. Uh, of all the drones we've brought along today, only the FD-1 will be able to lift that. Okay. Um, so the FD-1 has a, a 2 kg payload, so it lifts up to 2 kilos. Um, and typically, unless you're trying to catch five sharks with five different Bonito heads, you're not going to need 2 kgs, but... Um, the thing that's important about a drone that can lift two kilos is if it sits nice and heavy in the wind, it's very stable. Um, as I was talking about 25 knot winds at Muriwai, you didn't, you wouldn't even know. So um, that's just a little bit of a blurb on each of them. What I'll do now, I've um, set up backbones on two of the rods already. Um, but these are the backbones that we uh, supply at Paul's Fishing Systems. These are our... These are our release wires here, so you can have a look up close a little bit later on. Basically on the end of our spool, we've got coast clips on both ends. Each spool comes with two um, backbones, so two uh, setups with six hooks able to be um, clipped onto them. How they work, we use two three ounce sinkers, reason for two rather than one six ounce sinker. More wires in the sand, more grip. And on the west coast, which I have a feeling we're going to see today, because it's always when we're having demos, <clears throat> um, we're going to see a bit of current out there. With, with having more wires in the sand, you've got a better opportunity of getting those wires to stick. And um, on, the, on the drone fishing front, if you can get your sinker to stick, especially on the west coast, chances are you're going to get a shot at some good fish. So the first name of the game is getting your sinkers to grab. All right, so how we apply these just on the end of our clip and I'll pass this around in a second they just sit on like that nice and easy and then last of all we just put our release wire on the same clip and that just sits real simple real easy at the end of the day you unclip it put it back in the tackle box and away you go then from here this oh better not do that there we go this will run out and along our backbone we've got our six um, uh, hook placements. So the two crimps that are closest together indicate where you will clip your trace. So reason for, for it being set up like this, the distance between the two clip sections is, is long enough that you're not gonna tangle your two hooks. So it's, it's separated enough that there's enough movement on your hooks where it's needed, um, but they're not going to touch and tangle Cool. and we'll, we'll demonstrate that in a second as well that runs out you've got six places to put hooks you don't have to use six hooks if you don't want to three hooks is cool up to you um, and then on the other end ooh. on the other end we've just got another coast lock clip this one here will go to the end of your rod as you can see on this rod closest to us there's a bead, that bead is simply to protect the top guide of your rod because often when you're winding in you're looking at the fish not paying attention if your swivel is the only thing on there the top of your uh, rod's guide gets uh, crumbled pretty quick so that, that's just something we do with all of our gear to, to make sure that your rod's protected um, below that is a swivel, just a simple swivel this clips into that swivel so all of the setup, all of the knot tying and all of that is taken care of it's all coast lock clips so keep it real simple. Um, any questions on the backbone side of things? No? Um, just the other thing too, we have um, 
a couple of YouTube channels that break this down and have have quite a few demonstrations of the drones being used so um, if you do do a bit of YouTubing let me know and I can um, point you in the direction of some of those videos as well um, but yeah real basic uh, backbone setup for the spry like I was saying earlier we've got a three hook setup because of the weight carry that that um, drone can do it's basically six ounces and three baits is what you'll get out of that so I'll give this Say 20 pound trace between these and that, in case they get snagged. Um, I, I find because because of the um, the price of um, the backbone, I, I, I don't worry too don't often. Worry nah, nah. Yeah. yeah. Like, well, the sink is directly under the drain. Yes, well, yes. The, the reason why we do it that way is you want your weight. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever watched videos and seen the pendulum yeah, swinging. Yeah, yeah. Um, awesome question. And actually, because of the sun, I'm going to move that battery out of it because the, sh the shade's moved a bit. Um, I'm going to hold on to this actually. Don't want it getting hot. Good note, good note. Don't let these sit in the direct sun because they can get very hot. Um, yeah, so the, the question was just asked, where do we position the weights on the drone? We, we stick it directly under the drone, as close to the drone as we can safely have it. Reason for that is, the further away it is, when you're moving a drone, if, if the drone's doing a bit of this, if you're, if you're moving it up and then out and then up and then out, that creates a real dangerous pendulum swing. All you need is for the pendulum to hit enough of an angle that your prop catches a bit of line. And it, and it sounds pretty crazy, but it does happen. So when your weights are directly under the, the drone, it just gives it a bit more of that centrifugal... Oh, bit of flash words today, Farno. You might want to write some down. That centrifugal force is, uh, <clears throat> is taken care of. So, yeah, sinkers directly under the drone just means that pendulum doesn't have the opportunity to be too big. So, yeah, um, and you'll see us clipping that on in a second. Um, any other questions about the backbone? These have been awesome questions, by the way. Any other questions? Um, so, by law, you're only allowed up to seven hooks. You go over seven hooks, you're supposed to have a buoy out on the other end. Now there are drones out there, I've noticed, that do more than seven hooks. You are, by law, you're not supposed to. So we, we've made a, a six hook rig so that um, people are going to be within their, their confines. Yeah, yeah. but good question, good question. Yeah. Hey? I haven't actually checked. It doesn't feel like there's too much, which means it's possibly coming over the back there. Yeah. So we're gonna be, we're gonna be good. We're gonna be good. Uh, any other questions? What happens if you put two eight ounce weights instead of two three ounce um, No, you can, you can definitely do that. And um, there are times where you have to play with the weight. Yeah, um, with the FD1 because you can go up to two kgs. Fine. Um, yep. Same again. Yep. It's got a very good payload, so you're fine. Yeah, absolutely fine. Um, those particular sinkers there, you'll notice um, our sinkers have a wider, a thicker wire um, inside the sinker. That's so that it's a lot harder to pop out. Today what I'm going to do also is put some rubber bands on the end. That is, that is just our way of making sure we've got every possible opportunity to get the sinkers to grab. Alright, so the old 90 mile trick will be applied today. Um, yeah, any other questions? These are awesome questions guys. Any other questions? No? Let's get it going, eh? Let's get it going. Awesome. All right. So, um, well, feel free to come in closer. Has it got an automatic release? Um, this one here has got the um, button release. Yeah. They used to have tension, but they've gone away from they've them. Gone away from them. Yeah. yeah, and that was only just recently. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I find, like you'll see it today, because we've got a wind going down the beach, I find having that um, the switch release or the release mechanism, I find that to be quite helpful. Um, and you'll see why today. Like We'll get a bit of a belly in the line. Yeah. I'll purposely let us get a belly so that we can take it out of the line. I'll show you how we do that. But um, yeah, without that, you can often, there have been times where I've been doing a set, um, we get a big belly in the line, I'm like, yep, drop it there, the boys go to stop the line. It hasn't dropped. It's still, it's still the getting the belly out. Yeah, so having that on there, you um, you just get a little bit more control over where your sinker lands. Oh wait, what? How do you put the, like, the hook on it? 
Oh, we'll, we'll get to that in a second, my man. Keen on the fishing, eh? Um, so, with our batteries on the FD1, there's a sticker that says this side up. This side up. So, okay, slot that back in. So, this, this is your yellow plug here. On this side of the battery, you'll see it pretty simple. You just make sure that that's nice and snug. I'll often clip that in first and then fasten the battery with the strap. Um, a GPS unit on the top here. Um, really important that you get your battery to be nice and stable as well. Nothing worse than having your battery rattling inside it. Or as compact as possible, the better the flight, the better the flight's going to be. So making sure that's nice and nice and firm, nice and solid. Um, the other thing I find sometimes we'll get customers coming, the drone's not going forward. I'm like, okay, show me, show me how you set it up. And they're like, oh, I set it up like you do on the video. Thank you very much. I'm like, awesome, show me. Show me, it never gets old. And um, what they do often, the front of the drone is here. Often they'll have it like this, trying to go forward. Well, it's not gonna work. So just remember front, front on the top of the, uh, the GPS unit. This is important because the GPS is in the top of the lid. Okay, so front, front, front. That drops down here. Yep, put that back in. Cheers, Maddie. I, I tend to work these just like a tyre, I don't get it tight on, on any of the sides, I'll, I'll screw them in. <clears throat> once it starts to grab then I'll work my way back around again. Really important once you've done this that you check it, because this is where the waterproofing comes in. Um, they're a very very solid system, if you've watched on YouTube, uh, we went out for a day and I've got to be honest I was pretty nervous, I've never chucked anything with mechanical uh, or anything electrical actually at salt water and um, I was asked to test it and um, so we spent a good hour well we spent 10 minutes before that hour freaking out on the side of the water like it's not a prank hey? we're not gonna get in trouble um, but I was chucking this thing upside down so this was landing in the water upside down it corrects itself and then we'll fly out again um, so yeah needless to say I was pretty impressed I was pretty impressed and we we're only supposed to test it once or twice we did about 10 we did about 10 but just yeah, yeah don't tell them um, so that's now our battery set up on the top and you don't have to have these ridiculously tight just so that they're nice and snug and aren't going to come loose all right the next part with our propellers and what I'll do is um if people are looking at getting the FD1 this is a good time to come and have a feel on how the propellers work you'll see on the propellers there's CW that stands for clockwise on our propellers CW so just another small thing that makes a big difference when you're getting set up so clockwise to clockwise you just you push it till it naturally wants to sit in there press it down and then rotate and you make sure that's nice and snug all right off, off, usually the clockwise is opposite each other yep there we go there we go sit that down cool does anyone want to come and have a go with the other two? Volunteers? We won't laugh if you get it wrong. For too long. Anyone want to have a, come and have a go? No? Not the nervous class. Come on, guys. Don't, you're making me, yeah, here we go, here we go. Have a go, boys, have a go. So you just sit it on there till it finds its groove. Then it's a nice firm press down and rotate. You'll feel where it wants to go. That's the one. Yep, and just check it's nice and snug. Yep, perfect. Perfect. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Yep, so thumb, yeah, that's our one. Yeah, perfect. Yep, sweet. Make sure these are all nice and snug. Yep. Awesome. Um, another note with the cameras on the FD1, this is a 1080 camera. It has a uh, manual gimbal. So basically, it's not a gimbal, it's a harness that you have to move uh, yourself before you fly it. So that's uh, on our FD1, the SD4, you can get both the 1080 as well as the 4K camera. But we won't go into any camera stuff today. Um, basically because I'm a fisherman, not a cameraman. So um, we'll, we'll do some of that stuff later on. But um, that is now a hardware setup drone. Okay, so we've got the props on, we've got our battery in, our lid's on the right way. Everything is set to go. I'll often at this point just do one more check 
make sure everything's nice and snug yep now setting up our drone I'm gonna have this facing the the water first thing to always do good habit to get into actually let's check if we've got batteries who Jamie is on Jamie is on first thing to always do is make sure all of your switches are in the upright position all right one of your switches this is your GPS so un until you become an expert drone fisherman I recommend keep this in the GPS um, I'm I'm very big on that because I'm not a drone fish uh, drone flying expert but keep it in the GPS and it'll look after you um, normal this is normal return home basically normal means you can fly it out control where it's going as soon as you flick that down to return home that's the middle middle switch here that'll start coming back to wherever you've calibrated your home base for the drone so let's put that up into normal <clears throat> on this side we've got airdrop so this switch here is basically the mechanism on the bottom we've got a mechanical release today so this one here you, you'll see here there's a pin when we turn it on that pin will force uh, its way through here that's where we lock our release wire that holds our sinkers hooks back to our rod cool so that's just a switch open and close any questions What's your name again? Case. Case. Awesome, my man. Awesome. Any, any other questions about the FD1 so far? One of the things I noticed, if you do have one of those switches down, yep. it won't start. Yeah, That's yeah. It's a safety feature. Right? Yeah, and there, so he's just highlighted the fact that if you do have one of these down, it will show up on the, the um, remote control. There are times, however, that I've noticed it does bypass that. So it's just really important to set some good habits. It is a computer at the end of the day, and I don't know if you've um, done much on computers, sometimes the computer has a mind of its own. So just really important to set some good habits, gives you a good day out fishing, and then we can sort the bugs out later. Awesome. So, turning it on. If you haven't um, worked your way around, it took me about two minutes to find the on button. Um, it's the black button here on the bottom. It's the black button at the bottom there. If you can see that. How you turn him on, actually first thing, always turn the remote control on, remote's on, and then it's press, press hold. Here we go. Mm -hmm. First thing that'll show up on your remote control is initializing. Initializing is basically the remote's talking to the drone, basically. And that you'll see that pop up um, throughout the calibration process as well. <clears throat> right, so that's all sussed. On your um, remote control, uh, I might pass this around, you've got the voltage of your remote on the top left corner. In the, the middle here, you've got the voltage of your drone. 17.4 means you've got a full battery. At 14 volts, it's going to start dropping sinkers. Basically, that means it's, it's getting rid of all the weight. It's starting to run low on voltages. Difference between the um, Swell Pro FD1 and the Condor sort of setup, Condor will go to 10 minutes, then it'll auto, auto return home even if you've got your sinkers in it, and that's quite embarrassing. So watch your timings. I've done it, done it too often, and, and you have a beach full of laughing people. Um, like, yeah, I didn't want to put those baits out, family. <clears throat> so really pays to check your timing if you're using a Condor. 10 minutes means lock it off and drop it as soon as you can. Just say, no, nah, close set, close set. <clears throat> um, on the FD1 or the Spell Pro, the difference is it's run by voltage on the drone. So 17.4 is a full battery. Once it gets down to 14 volts, it's going to start dropping sinkers, saying, uh, indicating to you, hey, I'm, I'm running low on uh, juice. I need, to start, I need to start coming home. Then it'll start flying a little bit haywire. Okay, so it's like a, a cousin who's low on sugar for the day. All right, that's what your drone starts to do. It needs, it needs some more juice. Okay, so you'll, you'll, the, the behavior of each drone is very, very different. Um, I've had so many calls in the shops Mate, my, my drone's dropping my sinkers. How's your battery? I don't know. Okay, check your battery. Put a new battery in. Yeah, no, it's not now. Thank you. Awesome. Have a good day. Have a good day. So that's the difference with the FD1, okay? Um, on the top right-hand corner, that's your satellite count. It's um, showing we've got 10 satellites. For the FD1, that's perfect. 10 satellites in the far right corner. In the second line, you're going to have an H, big H, that's the height. So that's the height that the drone's um, sitting at. You've got a D just below that. That's your distance from where home is um, or where your remote sort of is standing. 
you've got VS, which is your vertical speed, and HS, which is your horizontal speed. All right, so that's just a, a brief breakdown of the remote control. Um, awesome, with, with these particular remotes, you it's it's double A batteries, so yeah, pays to have a, a bunch of these in your car as well. <clears throat> Nothing worse than getting there, everything's all juiced up, and you forgot the double A batteries. Oh, someone's testifying at the back. Awesome. So we've turned on our drone, we've turned on our remote control. Um, now it's time for calibrating. Any questions before we calibrate? Uh, <laughs> yes. Um, we we have one of these small ones, but not with a camera on it. All oh, right. Okay. Well, if you're good to grandma and granddad today, they just might get you the camera. <clears throat> here we go. All right. So <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. So here we go. We've got our GPS on the top right hand corner. And what we're going to do to initialize, uh, initialize the calibration is rapidly flick it up and down. Don't need to be gentle on this process. I've, I've seen a lot of people, here we go, um, doing that quite slowly and quite gently. It is a rapid sort of uh, process. If the first thing it'll say is uh, horizontal calibration, rotate drone clockwise. Right. So this is where... You're going to, remember, clock face that way. So you're going to start going clockwise. The other way is same as how we do the condor. I find this gives it a bit more accuracy when it hovers to do it this way. So there are options. I've just found this to be a bit better. Yep, now it says vertical calibration, um, rotate drone clockwise, nose down. Now, this is the trick. This is the front, so that's where your nose is. So when you're rotating it nose down, what you don't want to be doing is going up that way, okay? So what I'll typically do is finish the rotation clockwise, drone down, then start the process again. Now, Does it yep, now it says initializing, just place that on a nice flat surface, again initializing just means the remote's talking to the drone, <clears throat> awesome, so now the drone's um, clicked back to what we saw before we calibrated, it's got all of our um, voltages, it's got our satellites, height, distance, all of that sort of thing, and now it knows that this is home, okay, one little tip, when you're setting up your home um, base and you're doing your calibration, don't do it at low tide, because um, you'll be having a cup of tea up here thinking, why is the drone landing in the water? Because the tide's coming and home's still out there. So just, just a little tip, set up above the high tide mark, set your home base above the high tide mark, and then you can walk to the beach to set it up. All good? Um, all right, we're into, into the home stretch and we can start fishing. So. I was talking about the airdrop, so that's that switch there. So that opened up, that's where we would put our release wire, um, which was being passed around earlier, that thing there. So that's where this would sit inside here, like so. Yep. And then that's connected up now. Cool. And then releasing it, simple as that. So it's just a switch, just a switch that will do that for you. Um, other than that, return to home, we can't, we can't showcase that until it's time to bring the drone home. So, uh, any questions? Otherwise, it's time to do some fishing. Yes? Um, um, is the, uh, how do you take those, the propellers off? Um, is it the same way you put it on? Yes, exactly, exactly. Awesome. How do you know when this fish on? Um, normally, you'll see panic in granddad's face and grandma's face. You, as soon as you see panic, you got to fish somewhere. I got to fish somewhere. All right. Okay, let's start connecting up. So we'll come over to the rods and reels. Yeah, yeah. Can you hold that for me? Put it on for you. Yeah, that'd be cool. And I will. Other side. This one. Yeah, yeah. That's him there. Cool. Do you calibrate special time, even though it's showing you 10, uh, 10 satellites? I calibrate. Every time? Oh, wait, yes, every oh, start of the day. Start of the every day. time I. And if you move up the beach, yeah. I've just found safety wise, yeah. best to recalibrate. Yeah. No, it's fine. Yeah. So, what's going on over here is we're, we're putting rubber bands on our sinkers. 
and that's um on the west coast in particular on the east coast i don't find i've ever introduced them but on the west coast because we're going to have a big current out there um just putting the rubber bands on the end and um there's a trick called the 90 mile where you cat's paw do you know how to cat's paw everyone know how to do a cat's paw no that's a bit of um watching on youtube but the same way that we'll put our um our sinkers on basically here i'll grab that one. Oh yeah sweet so that's it right there so you put it through your loop you'll have both ends sticking out you grab one and you pull it through does that make sense yep, yep. sweet so that's a cat's ball um and then with that that'll that'll stay on um you're not going to be wasting rubber bands putting them in the ocean then you pull it down like so goes onto the bottom these are the big kite ones so you guys might go home with big muscles after this um, because sometimes they don't let go um, and I'll just get a twist on the top there we go and that just means our wires aren't going to pop out as easy all right they will eventually pop out um, and I'll show you a way to uh, if you get snagged or if you you do get the rubber bands playing up on you which does happen sometimes I'll show you a way to dislodge them but um that there is going to be a, one of our best chances of getting sinkers to stick in the sand. So, the old rubber band, eh? This one for now. Um, just a quick demo of how how quick the uh, the snap locks come onto the... Um, well, that was how quick they actually do it. So, you're basically putting it on like that, pull the clip and it's on there. There's a little bit of movement in this. Why getting your sinkers set is so important? If your sinkers set like so, there's tension on this line. If there's tension on this line, these crimps are what strike the fish, strike the hook into the fish's mouth. So the fish will grab your bait, it'll run. By the time it hits that crimp, this hook stops, rolls into the corner of the fish's mouth. If you're if you haven't got tension on your sinkers or on your line, that means that fish can pick it up and move. As soon as it feels you've got a bit of weight on your line, it'll spit the hook. So having tension on your sinker is really important for the, the catching of fish side of things. So just a little note there, but because we um, forgot to put a bait on this one, we'll take them off for now, and we'll just get there. So there we go. And pass this around, be careful, but have a, have a look at our hooks. The, you'll see the wire on the end. This is our wire appendage. It's a, this, this is called the target snapper hook setup. This wire appendage is what has meant we're not catching undersized snapper. So with that simple little thing there, very, very significant change in the hooking of undersized fish and gut hooking. So if you catch your, your limit and you need to let some go, these hooks help you to do that and they catch a heck of a lot more fish. So just a bit of a breakdown on that, but pass it around, have a look. Just be careful. Got them. Um, yep, those are the, no, those are the fours. The four nickel teflons. Those ones. All right. Me. <clears throat> All right. Okay, guys, if I can ask everybody, just move out a little bit. <clears throat> um, typically, typically you would, um, and I recommend it. I'll be alright. I should be alright. <laughs> I'll know, I'll, only thing is I'll know within the first kind of two minutes if it's behaving correctly, that's all, that's all. Right, can somebody get on the end of our rod? Don't be shy, we're going to release the bail arm. Awesome, okay. Oh, this is the uh, FD1, here we go. Now, when you're doing this with your family or with your friends, just make sure people aren't on both sides like this. You, you typically want everyone behind the rod, um, but we've got a trained professional today, family. We've got a trained professional. Um, we're all set, <laughs> yeah, 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 cover your eyes. Um, we're all set to go. Yep, all right, here we go. Make sure people are on the boat side like this. So you get 
took a few months to go behind the wall. Uh, but we've got a trained professional today, so we've got a trained professional. Um, we're all set there, yeah. yeah cover your eyes. Um, we're all set to go. Yep. All right, here we go. So someone bring the rod holder, someone bring the rod with us. We'll go closer to the water's edge. So that's 600 meters now. I think I've only got about eight on the ground. Oh, yeah. Okay, we'll go, we'll go. okay, we're sitting at about 675. What I've done, I'm letting the drone hover. As you can see, the line stopped. Now, why the mechanical release? Well, it's not giving us a good demo. There are times where you'll have a real big bow in the line because um, the wind's pushing down the beach. When you've got a bow on the line, when you've got a mechanical release, it's simply just like the, the brother's been holding onto the line. You can pull a bit of tension back into your line by it um, simply holding on to it and tightening it just a little bit. Um, so here we go. I'm going to release it. Watch the tip of our rod. Here we go. Yep, you can see the line angle's changed now. That's now in the water. Yep, can you wind in your slack, brother? Awesome. Tighten up there. Okay, now I'm going to flick, return home. On your remote control, you'll see an R pop up in the middle. That means it's coming back. Um, you'll notice as I'm talking to you, I'm constantly keeping the remote pointed in the direction of the drone. Um, that's just a safety thing. Um, there are times where I've been talking to someone, forgotten, and um, the drone still come back, but good habits. Try and get into the good habits, look after your machine. Now, because we haven't had such a big belly, we might get these sinkers to stick quite well. Um, and what I'll do now is... How this winch works? Same as if you've done kontiki fishing, pretty well, pretty well the same. It's got a clip on the end here. That comes out and now we've got free spool. Real basic. Um, I won't put that in just yet. That'd be too small for a kontiki too, wouldn't it? Ah, uh, the braid? Um, no, it'll be alright. It'll be slow, but it'll be alright. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So the two main advantages of using this is one, you get a winch to winch it in. And yeah. two, you can go maximum distance. Yeah. Yeah. And what I like about this setup here is um, your bigger baits sit away from the rod and reel sort of setup. Almost like your, when you'd go out on the boats, you've got your long line sitting. You got your boat rods going as well later a little bit down the beach you know what i mean so that's what i like about a winch setup um so big baits big fish see what you get yeah really kids yeah yep. and, and that's, that's your table fish out there this, is your, this is your leave it out there have a big bait out yeah, there yeah big fish, yep. whatever it is. exactly exactly story to tell yep <laughs> and you didn't have to work hard to bring it in yeah, yeah. exactly so and you might get a big snap or you might get a big shark. Yeah, and, that's, and some a lot of the time it's a big can. shark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of the time it's that big shark that comes in. All right, we'll chuck that mullet head on. Oh, it went on. on. Right. Ah, oh, yep, sweet. Yeah. Um, no, sorry. The on the water, not yet. They're working on it. Yeah, it will soon. But um, nah, at the moment, no. We did a test on it. Oh, I've got to get wet, so I had to go out and get it. Yeah, but I rang him and I said, hey, I didn't know we, those, those don't get. It's like, it would have been nice to know that before. Uh, so, all right. So what size are your pockets that you've been using? Um, these ones are four barrows. They're the nickel teflon. Yeah, four barrow. Yeah, um, that's the, my kind of mainstay, um, the four barrows. 
so still catch big so snapper on them. Yeah, yeah, don't. Yeah. 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 Nah. Undersized. Nah, I don't think I've, I've caught an undersized fish on the drones this year, actually. Yeah, yeah. You, that thing. Yeah. 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 you do catch a lot around that 30 centimetre, like you catch a lot that size, but I've never caught. Yeah, but lots of that size. <laughs> no, I, I imagine you, you'd be using the bigger hook. Yeah, yeah. Excuse me. Excuse me, gentlemen. Let's get him out there, eh? Gentlemen. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. All right, double check that. <laughs> okay, was that remote? Right, sinkers. We'll be keen to. Oh, you tied that up. Oh, the sinker, the rubber band. Yeah, yeah, no bands, stress. Yeah. Uh, actually, we'll add one or two, eh? Um, we'll chuck those other two on. Yeah. So for this for this set here, we'll do a bit of a demo as to um, putting a bit more weight on it as well, just to show you how it flies. We'll put two more sinkers on and a mullet head. Just to give you an idea of how smooth it is with a bit of weight under it. <clears throat> I've done 15 ounces. Just to, just to show people that. I wouldn't fish with 15 ounces, but just to, so people got an idea. Like when we come out and demo, I do try and show a bit of diversity to them. But what I try and tell people is the less weight you can actually get to stick, the better. Yeah, um, the amount of times we've done big amounts of weight still swept down the beach, or we've done big amounts of weight and you're fighting a fish, the, the, the rubber band hasn't um, come out and the, that then lodges in a sandbank you're coming across and you lose your fish, like the less weight you can get to stick, the better. So you start as little as you can, you work your way up till you're starting to get the fish. Yeah, yeah, the coast lock clips and stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a that's the 90 mile trick, it's the old surfcasters trick. That. Yeah, yeah. I've spent many a time getting a rash in the undies. That, that's, a, that's what that represents, making it worthwhile. Yeah. So we'll chuck them in there. Yeah, just another thing. Always try and get the sand off your um your wire. Just less sand than your machine, the better. Yeah. Sweet. Front. Sweet. Good spotting. Yeah. Um, we can go one more weight if you want. Yeah. And what I'll do is I'll stick that mullet head here. Oh, no, that's all right. Just chuck them on like that. Can you hold that, bud? Now, what I'm doing is I want all as much of the weight as I can get close to the drone. So I'm just adjusting this, setting the, the big baits by the sinkers. Just lessens that pendulum. Awesome, thank you. <clears throat> right, so that's in free spool. Um, if I can just get somebody, I'll show you how the, um, when, we, when we start to lift this up, it'll start traveling out, I won't go too quick. But if I can just have somebody gently on the end of this, just, just gently holding the line so it doesn't overrun, yeah. cause us some problems, all right? Just, just be mindful there are sinkers that are kind of come off, so not too much pressure. It's just so we don't overrun. And I'll keep an eye on you. I'll keep an eye on you. Have you got sinkers on, on that line? On the line, yeah, just to keep, the, keep it down, yeah. All right, we're ready. And I'll keep an eye on you. I'll keep an eye on you. Have you got sinkers on, on that line? On the line, yeah, just to keep, the, keep it down, yeah. All right, we're ready. All right, got a bait. No one's standing in between it. No, we're all right. Yep, we're right. All right. Sweet. 
sing out if it's too quick. So we're up at about 43 meters high and we're at 500 meters now. All right, dropping our line. Yep, it's dropped. Return home. While dropping our line. Yep, it's dropped. Return home. While that's coming home, if someone wants to point this at our drone, you know, I want to point this at our drone. Yep, yep. So you just keep it pointed. You can see our dot, yeah, eh? Yeah, 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 he's like, yes, I can. You know it. Um, where's our clip gone? Yeah. Oh, excellent. Cool. And we'll just find our little gap there. Oh, yeah. And this is just, it, this basically engages the drag system. It's now locked in. This is your plug. Send that on there. And now. So you know with this, you don't tighten it up or anything? You, just you can't, yeah, no, I, I'll, I'll still give it a little bit of a tighten. Yeah. So this is pulse. Um, on this side here, you've got slow, medium, fast. I always start at least in medium. If it's if a really tight beach, lots of people around, I'll start slow. Dogs running up and down. Here's our drone. So slow, fast, medium. If you go on, it'll automatically start pulling in your line. Off. This has no line winder, so you've got to manually do it. So what I'll do, I'll bring it down fast. I'll get to about here, let it hover, and then slowly bring it down. And like who wants, and you, you can sit that on the tow bar, and oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you'd yeah. make a little rack for the tow bar or whatever. Just like that. You are. Um, yes, where we kind of set it up and set it off from. Yeah. So that's, so that's how it lands. I didn't control That's automatically land. Chuck them back into normal. Yeah, yeah. Next one I'll do, I'll, I'll catch it. Um, cool. Um, have we got business cards? No. No. Um, yeah, yeah. And we're in only Hunger anyway, Nelson Street. So. Yeah, awesome. Awesome, matey. Good to meet you. What did you send it out at? Um, I went up to 35, okay. and then every every kind of 100 meters I'd go up um, five meters okay. just to give that clearance over the water. Yeah. Um, yeah. Out of the window, right? Yeah, it was that was a piece of cake, piece eh? Of cake, eh? Yeah, piece well, of cake. Yeah. We yep. Sand out of the motor. Now yep. I've been using a hose on mine when I get back, you know. Yeah. But you can still feel a bit of grit in sometimes. What's the best way to get that sand out? Um, we've got Good. some. Yeah, yeah. We've got some um, spray now that people are using oh. for afterwards. The other okay. thing is the, I don't know if you've got a landing I've mat. Yep, cool. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then the final thing is catching it. Um, oh, I'll, I'll, show, I'll show you how to do it. It's, it's, it's relatively... Carbon fiber. What height did you go? 40 meters. It, it ended up at 40. Uh, so, good question. The height that I typically will set it out, I'll start at 30. I'll get it just out 100, 150 meters, I'll go up another five, another 100 meters, another five, another 100 meters, another five. Basically all I'm doing is keeping my line angle above the water. Because um, often as you're going out, the faster the momentum of the line, the quicker it starts coming off the reel. You can get a bit of a belly that starts touching the water. That's when the current starts playing up on you. So all I'm doing is basically trying to keep my line angle directly to the drone without it being too tight. All right. So that's, that's basically the understanding there. Um, because I've been a bit um, naughty and I've just kept it on, we do recommend after every set, turn it straight off straight away. Just battery life, save your life so you can do more sets. Um, I've been leaving it on while we're talking and all of that sort of stuff, but um, that's just another little tip. Turn it off as soon as you've landed it, turn it off, turn off your remote. Gives you more life, more sets out of the day. Um, Typically, we wouldn't just leave it on like we've been doing, but um, we'll get two sets out of each battery doing it this way. Normally, we'll get four, four good sets out of it, all right? Just the breakdown of the batteries. What voltage you got on there at the moment? What's that? What's the voltage at the moment? So we're sitting at 16.5 on our drone, so we'll get another set. No stress, no stress. No, no, no. Only time, only time I'll recalibrate is if I move locations. Now, a lot of people say, if I just go 200 meters down the beach, should I recalibrate? I do, I do. Only because 
you could have moved 200 meters down the, the beach. There's a bit of interference between you you don't see or don't know of. Um, it just pays to give the drone, it's a machine, give it every opportunity to do the right thing and come back to where you've set it. So um, some would probably say that's over the top. I, I, no, I'm over the top. Do you calibrate it at the table? Yep, yep. You took it off air. Yep, land. Yeah. So it takes the difference off the calibration. Yeah, yeah. So it, there are times where it will, because today we've got the real good luxury because we're fishing outgoing tide. We've got quite a range. Often you'll be in a bit tighter of a space. You won't notice the difference too much. Today, yeah, it was a good, good, good thing to spot. It's landed where we set it off. There are times though where it'll land where you've calibrated. So that machine, that's that machine factor. Yeah, yeah. Same question. So. Um, the condor, condor from what I've I've seen, sharks. How many flights have we done? It'll typically yeah, you lose count. It'll typically come back to where you've um, calibrated. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I mean with with the condor, the next set we do, I'll catch it by hand. So if, if my hand comes off, <laughs> no, no. Um, but I'll, I'll catch it by hand just to show you um, that style of um, landing the drone. Basically, why we do it like that is it. Coming down, you would have noticed how slow it took um, coming down. That's battery use. While it's up there spinning, it's using your batteries. The quicker you can get it to come down and land, turn it off, the more battery you use, you get out of it. So that's the only reason why we catch them and land them that way. You don't have to. You don't have to. Um, and I understand when you're using something that big, it's, it's, uh, the, the blades are pretty intimidating. So no, no stress either way. It just gives you more battery. All right. Um, cool. Let's connect up this set here. Um, now I noticed on that rod and you can see it from here you can see it's gone to the right there now on this particular set what I'm going to I'm going to set it out to the left so this is just this is a good demonstration of what West Coast beaches are going to do to you first set is typically the figure it out set second set you're trying to hone that in by the third set you should have it pretty landing pretty swell out, 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 out unless you've got some real crazy tides um, and in that case, you're fishing for Kahawai. Awesome. Uh, so we're going to set this one out to the left. The current's pushing to the right. I'm going to set it out to the left. Soon as we release it, the person on the reel, whoever's going to volunteer for that, your job is to get in any loose line. So you're going to wind in any loose line as quick as you can. Soon as you feel the sinker's grabbing, you start um, relaxing a little bit more, not, not pulling as hard. And what you're doing is you're just working the rod trying to get the sinkers to grab and dig in. So it's, it's nothing too full on, just a nice light working. Once you've got the rod tip just kind of bent forward, you know, sinkers have grabbed, put it in the rod holder. What I'll do is I'll spend about five, 10 seconds, just slight tightens, just because you're getting that little loose, the line's going to be like this. You're just slowly, as it's re um, releasing, you're slowly pulling it out and you're trying to get it straight, straight to your sinkers. Does that make sense? Is that cool? Awesome. Yeah, so another good question. If you by accident pop your sinkers, um, there are places and, and there have been times where we've popped the sinkers and we've gone, ah, dang it, we've pulled them out. We've still caught fish. So, I mean, what I'll do if, if it's out here and it's starting to come across and I'm like, ah, dang, I'll wait till it's on a, a, an angle like this before I'll bring it in because it's still got to cover some fishing ground. And if the fish are feeding, you still have a shot. So I'll, I'll wait till the line angle is like, yeah, I'm going to be walking up the beach soon um, and start walking it in there. All right. So, yeah, good, good questions. Um, so we've got 16.5 volts on. That's just been on the whole time. So we'll get another setup. We'll get it out and uh, we'll see if we can get our sinkers to grab. Who wants to volunteer for the next rod? Anyone want to volunteer? Have a go at trying to set the sinkers. Can you open the... Oh, yep. Is that an FD1? Yep, this is the FD1. Um, and how, how long ago did you get your one? Just before Christmas. It's only got the, um, it's only about this still. Ah, oh, yes, yep. So this is the, they've just changed these now. Has yours got the grey bottom? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so they've just, only just changed these up now. Well, how come they, how come they done that? They're trying to make the GPS tower a little bit taller. Um, so bring it in and we might be able to see what we can um, do there. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you great. might be able to upgrade it, yeah. Um, so yeah, there you go. Oh yes, the, the only difference is it just gives you a little, as you're standing here, yeah. this, yeah, 
being able to touch yeah. that. That's that's what the difference is. Yeah. But so I mean, I'm going to take him on out around about um, so 800 meters. Oh yeah, nice. So nice. where did it actually, can actually go further? Or yeah, I yeah. 800 meters. Yeah. yeah, I've done on an FD1. We're up at the 90 mile. I did a thousand meter set. Um, and the only reason why we only went a thousand, I ran out of line on the reel, and it come back no stress. We were all on the beach like, I'll be honest, we we're on the beach like far. This is pretty scary. I've never been out that far. You know, there's no hope of looking at it. Um, that's the they've just updated. Yeah, they've just done an update, and that's I mean that's one of the things that I must tip my hat to with Swell Pro. They're constantly looking at how they can improve what they have. Um, and I mean, in the space of a month, they can change it again. Because it says they can go out around about 1,400 metres. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so with that, that'll, that, that's really make sure you can get out that far. I think so. I think I think they're just slightly tweaking, slightly tweaking, slightly tweaking. Um, I mean, the original ones, the grey ones, they still say 1,400, 1,500 metres. So, um, if, yeah, yeah. And I mean, your remote controls will hold a log. So if, if you've gone out to 1,000 metres and it's lost connection, it'll remember that so you can go and hey this is what i did they, the funny thing is we do get a lot of guys no i just flew the drone and it fell in the water we'll bring it back in the log it says no you tripped your gps so what you don't want to do is come into the shop no it flew into a tree all by itself just come and tell us what happened um because often when we send it away to the guys that do the work they'll tell us no the gps was tripped the, the switch was pushed out or you know so just yeah but the log the log looks after you so if anything goes wrong with your drone, the log will tell them. All right. So that's the that's the kind of reason why that. You've got to make sure you actually when you turn on some flat surface. Yeah. Because yep. I've done it once and it was on a bit of an angle. Lands on an angle, eh? Yeah, yeah. Go, go yeah. So. That's it. And that's why I've got the table. Yeah. That table just gives me a nice. Yeah. Yeah. You're onto it. You're onto it. Um, awesome. Okay. That's. Okay. We need a volunteer on the rod and reel. Someone that's going to get our sinkers set. Um, yeah, choice, choice, matey. Um, the maximum time we haven't. It's 30 minutes without. I, I believe. Yeah, with weight it would be less. Yeah, because uh, so I've typically had four sets out of a battery. So and that's those are set five to six. Yeah, FD1. Yeah. Um, so I get four sets at about five to six hundred meters. So kind of gives you a bit of an idea. Yeah, I've never. So good question. How far out how far did you go? Uh, 675 meters. Yeah. And it went quick. It went real quick. <laughs> um, all right, guys, let's move back a bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> got, a, got a physical barrier there. All right, bail open. Is our bail arm open? Choice. So the first thing I'm going to do, because I've got people with me, same scenario when you've got your family with you, I'll lift it straight up, not up and out, straight up. That's taking up the line with the hooks on it. That's, that's all the thinking is behind that. Nice and slow. All right, we're going to go for it. Yeah. Okay, so is he walking up? Yeah. Yep. And someone bring the um hold up. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good drone, eh? We're going to drop it. Yep, let's let go. Yep, flick your bail arm. And get that line, that loose as you can. As soon as you feel some type of grabbing, just slow it. Yep, keep winding. You'll feel that grab. And I like to keep the tip, tip of the rod high because then you'll, you'll feel 
you'll feel the sand and all of that sort of stuff. So 500 There we go, starting to grab. Yep, just nice slow winds. Yep, and in this situation, what I'll do is just, just little slow kind of rod bends and bounces, yeah. And it's just getting the sinkers to kind of lodge themselves in, yeah. Yep, and then wind up any loose line that's there. Yep. And you're going to try and get just a bit more of a tip in the rod, a little bit more of a tension. Here he comes. Like 800 and then five testing where the fish are yeah yeah more just trying to distance. find yeah just so trying to no find where the bites them all are at 500 or nah. all at 800 you might as well mix it up that's right, right. Yeah. and typically today because i want to set quickly so people could see how quick it does it yeah. um typically i'll start but just because there's other hundred yeah. it's not really about nah it's about finding the fish yeah yeah but it just is quite handy on having that capacity to get out they will probably up this real on it yeah yeah that's actually people got excited actually we're oh sh quick some good questions guys okay, i'll lift it up and catch it <laughs> yeah yeah okay did you guys see me catch it by hand no sorry too many questions that was a good see my hand my hand Oh. Yeah, I, I took mine up to Ruakaga. Oh, choice. Yeah, yeah, remember I come and saw you yeah. the last yeah. couple of days where first day I went out, did two sets, Foo. two snapper. Ooh. Uh, smallest one was 320, biggest one was 440. Yep. The second day I took it out, we did two sets, uh, no, we did three sets, and I got uh, three, three, two. Oh, oh that's, a all all that's a good day. That's a good day, mate. That's a um, one. Oh yeah, yeah, cool. Do you sell the wine uh, droppers as well? Yes, yeah, we've got all that stuff. Yep. Um, oh, turn that back up. That back. Yep, yep. Ah, I'm always condor turning it on. <laughs> okay, so we'll do a bit of a, a catch by hand. So sitting about here, when it's returned home, I'll leave it up high, bring it down quickly, I'll let it hover here, and then I'll come underneath. And that's it there. So that's a catch. So what I was trying to say with that loud as fan behind me, was I'll typically, when it returns home, it's normally up about that 40 meters. What I'll do, I'll bring it down to that height that I was leaving it hovering at. I'll bring it down to that as quick as I can, safely as I can. Once it's at that height, I'll get in position underneath, slowly bring it down to my hand. So you but, take it out at 40 meters and bring it back at Yeah, and I think once you hit return home, it naturally goes back to that 40. Yeah, yeah. And that wind, that kind of yeah. surf wind, yeah, gets up above it all, eh? Yeah. All right. Cool. That one's real hard to the right now, eh? Yeah. That one there looks all right. We did it. I think we did it. Like I was saying, after each set, good good habit to get into. Just turn them off. Press, press, hold. You don't need to recalibrate it? No. Nah, no. Nah, she's so good. calibrated the spot, she's calibrated. Yeah, she's good. She's good. Unless oh, you change. Only late time you go to a new spot. Yeah. We need to upgrade and each and new start of the day. Just as a safety, even if you're in the same spot. Yeah, and I mean, even if like if I've gone, if I'm staying at a batch, for example, and we're fishing out the front, go to sleep that night, I'll come out, I'll still do it first thing. Yeah, just a safety, just a safety. No, nah, no, nah, you don't. On the same day, on the same day, you don't need to. I, you don't. Technically, you don't need to on the next day, but I do it as a good habit, because what you don't want to do is start creating an erratic kind of habit and then. One day you forget to do your, yeah, so that's it. Yeah, five minutes and you've got a bit of peace. Yep. Yep.
turn them off. Turn them off straight away? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. You'll be very, very no, no need to calibrate, yep. <clears throat> cool. Alright, we'll have a go with the uh, spray in a moment, eh? So feel free to come and have a look at the FD1 now. Um, we'll have to wind that one in. So perfect example, this first set that we've put out, it's been taken right down the beach. Right now we're fishing for crabs um, and probably a mullet net soon. But um, on the left hand side we were able to get the sinkers to grab just by a bit of teamwork, bit of communication. Um, and that's what it's about. Your first set usually is the practice or get, get the idea of what's in front of you going. Um, but our second one looks like it's doing, it's doing what we needed, so. Okay. GPS up, GPS, yep, yep, yep. Yes, that's the one, yeah, yeah. It's got the A22 inside too, actually. Um, I'm up just after this fella. Does it come in a bag or just like that? Has it got a box or anything? The FD one? Yeah. It comes in a box, but it's cardboard. Oh, okay. um, but what, I, what I've been telling people to do, I'm not sure if, um, if you've been to Bunnings or anything like that, you can get a, they get those tall sort of hard cases yeah. with the foam in it. Yeah. You just cut the foam to fit and then it's primo. Absolutely primo. Good idea. Got wheels on it too, so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, even us young fellas get into it a bit too, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So here we go. You always want to have us uh, hover around the spray. Hey, brother. Um, so with our spray, obviously this one goes out 800 meters. Basically, it'll carry six ounces and three hooks. Um, and right now, as you can see on the camera, it's got the analog camera built into the um, remote control. Reason why that's handy, some people say, oh, I prefer it was on my phone that I could clip onto the drone. If you drop both of these in the water, it's better that only this gets wet and your phone doesn't. So they've, they've gone down this way because of issues with previous models. So they've, yeah, they've thought about a lot of things. Um, but 1080 camera, it is a 4K camera, but only at 30 frames per second. Um, it is a... Damn, gone. Um, but it is a 1080 camera at 60 frames per second. Um, so yeah, if you can see... Quite, quite tidy, actually. Quite tidy. Um, I haven't done a heck of a lot of flying with these bad boys, but um, the way the propellers go on, You'll put your props on, then you've got some little um, nuts that go on the top here. You tighten them on, and what I've been told is the flares on the props facing into the drone. So that's just a quick rundown on the propellers. Um, battery, everything. Battery sits inside here. Um, there's an Allen key. This opens up here as well. Actually, I won't do that while it's on. Sweet. On the bottom of the drone, this is our tension release. So this, this one doesn't have a mechanical release, it has the tension release on it. Um, basically, same as the A20 Condor, this will plop in there like so. When you put your hand on your reel or you flick the bail arm over, that'll disconnect the line and drops into the water. Cool. So real basic breakdown of this. Um, GPS is on the top, waterproof drone, um, there's a video on the PFS YouTube channel of these boys absolutely being rough as guts with this drone and um, it, it held its own real real easy so waterproof, um, what have I missed bro? Uh, yep. 800 so meters. Got, uh, option of two types of propellers as well? Yeah that's right so um, and this is the heavier prop uh, propeller. So there are two types of props that come, a double blade and a triple blade, yes. So the triple blade just gives you a bit more way uh, wind range. So this one's built for a bit more uh, wind resistance. The smaller ones are just for that casual day, you wanna just get your surf caster out past the breakers, basically. Um, right, 
Let's get it flying. Actually, I'll get you to do this one, bro. Just so you can use two hands. Yeah. Cool. Um, you're gonna come in the middle. So this this drone in particular, as I was saying, is only a three hook sort of setup. So really good if you're you're just wanting to be able to fish behind the breakers. It does go 800 meters, um, so it's got a pretty good range on it. Um, the other thing with this drone, if you're a fisherman, you won't worry too much about it, but what it does is it speaks about um, the versatility of it. If you've got goggles, the FPV goggles, you can actually fly it through the goggles, but that requires a lot of skill, okay? So I don't recommend it unless you want to get into the hobby of flying drones. Fishermen, we're all good. Leave the goggles for the divers. Um, we'll just fish with the boats. The boats. Oh, yep, yeah, sweet. Okay. Um, so... Same thing with our FD1s, we're going to do the calibration first. On your uh, right hand side you've got your GPS, up both togs of the um, remote control facing upwards. Um, to calibrate this on this side, sorry, this is your return home. So same as the FD1 sort of setup, calibration is the same as an FD1 as well, um, but rapid up and down. Yep. It now says horizontal calibration, rotate drone clockwise. I'm gonna put this down because I'm a bit gumby with one hand. So I'm gonna rotate drone clockwise. Yep, that's changed. Okay, so now it says vertical calibration, clockwise, nose down. So Again, there's your nose, the front of the, um, the drone, real easy on this because it's got a camera. Nose down, you're going to do it again. Yep, it now says initializing. I like to put it on as flat a surface as I possibly can. Just gives you a better quality of GPS. It's not going to come down on an angle, all of that sort of thing. Nice and flat. And it's now connected up and it just it'll go back to normal again so on this particular drone it's got your um, voltage it's got your satellites up in the top left corner um, it's got your GPS so that's telling us it's in GPS mode it talks about your height your distance um, and the time that you've been flying as well all right so uh, let's get this fella up yeah, right. Uh, left control toggle is up and down, right control is out, back. Again, because you've got your camera on the screen, you can actually see exactly where your drone is, what it's doing. This drone in particular doesn't have as big a wind resistance as our FD1, so you can see it kind of negotiating from time to time with the wind. So that's out there now, that's sitting at about 100 meters from us. I'm going to flick our return home. So here it goes, turning around. So very, very similar to our FD1, just the wind range, the weight capacity it can lift is a lot less. This one has a camera as well.
I haven't done a heck of a lot of flying with these bad boys but um, the way the propellers go on you'll put your props on then you've got some little um, nuts that go on the top here you tighten them on and what I've been told is the flares on the props facing into the drone so that's just a quick rundown on the propellers um, battery everything battery sits inside here um, there's an allen key this opens up here as well Actually, I won't do that while it's on. Yeah, so sweet. On the bottom of the drone, this is our tension release. So this, this one doesn't have a mechanical release. It has the tension release on it. Um, basically, same as the A20 condor. This will flop in there like so. When you put your hand on your reel or you flick the bail arm over, it'll disconnect the line and drops into the water. Cool. So real basic breakdown of this, um, GPS is on the top, waterproof drone, um, there's a video on the PFS YouTube channel of these boys absolutely being rough as guts with this drone and um, it, it held its own real real easy, so waterproof, um, hey, so there are two types of props that come, a double blade and a triple blade, yes, so the triple blade just gives you a bit more way, uh, wind range so this one's built for a bit more uh, wind resistance the smaller ones are just for that casual day you want to just get your surf caster out past the breakers basically um, right let's get it flying actually I'll get you to do this one bro This drone in particular, as I was saying, is only a three hook sort of setup. So really good if you're, you're just wanting to be able to fish behind the breakers. It does go 800 meters, um, so it's got a pretty good range on it. Um, the other thing with this drone, if you're a fisherman, you won't worry too much about it. But what it does is it speaks about um, the versatility of it. If you've got goggles, the FPV goggles, you can actually fly it through the goggles. But that requires a lot of skill. Okay, so I don't recommend it unless you want to get into the hobby of flying drones. Fishermen, we're all good. Leave the goggles for the divers. Um, we'll just fish with the boat today. Oh, yeah, sweet. Okay. Um, so, same thing with our FD1s. We're going to do the calibration first. On your uh, right hand side, you've got your GPS. Up, both togs of the uh, remote control facing upwards. Um, to calibrate this on this side, sorry, this is your return home. So same as the FD1 sort of setup, calibration's the same as an FD1 as well. Um, but rapid up and down. Yep, it now says horizontal calibration, rotate drone clockwise. I'm gonna put this down because I'm a bit gumby with one hand. So I'm gonna rotate drone clockwise yep it's changed okay so now it says vertical calibration clockwise nose down so again there's your nose the front of the, um, the drone real easy on this because it's got a camera nose down you're going to do it again Yep, it now says initializing. I like to put it on as flat a surface as I possibly can. Just gives you a better quality of GPS. It's not gonna come down on an angle, all of that sort of thing. Nice and flat. And it's now connected up. And it just, it'll go back to normal again. So on this particular drone, it's got your um, voltage. It's got your satellites up in the top left corner. Um, it's got your GPS. So that's telling us it's in GPS mode. It talks about your height, your distance, um, and the... So, 
Um, these two straps on the top here are basically for our trace rack. Set your traces in the top. Um, fishing rod on the side here. The front's got plenty of space for things like your um, your backbones, um, another spare set of traces, all the little accessories that come with it. Um, it's got a clip to go around your waist, so if you're doing a bit of a walk into a posse. Um, and on this side, you can have another trace rack. You can have um, our Tika Traveller rods fit in here really well as well. You've got the backpack for the, or the bag for those. Plenty of things that you can strap onto these backpacks. Just means you can walk in if you're not forward driving into a posse. So that's what the backpack is about. Quick demo on that. Props are on properly. That's that's now hardware set up. Good to go. Um, remote control, real simple. We have our um, antenna straight out ahead we used to do it on an angle like this you'll see it in older videos we had it like this we found when it starts getting out further having it like this just gives us a lot better connection so this is the way to go now yeah it's the way to go um right the other thing with the condors now this is the golden rule and i say it maybe 20 times before a customer leaves the shop with one these two on the top here they must be facing in that's your gps if they're like that I hope you can fly a drone. <laughs> um, put them in, you're safe. And I've got a. Uh, <clears throat> we've had somebody have a really um, live demonstration um, of how the GPS, when it's clicked off, it's a scary situation. So, um, yeah. Basically, to turn on your remote control, switch across. To turn on your drone, it's a press, press hold. Then it's a really flash disco, the lights fl um, flash a few different colours. It's connecting on your on your drone, um, this is your up and down, same as our FP1. This is your um, out, back, um, if you're wanting to pivot it, it's a side, side motion on this. Same with the FP1, that'll turn it back to another direction. But for, for beginning, while you're getting used to it, I, just, I suggest on your barrel, up and down, out. If you're not touching the actual toggles, there's a lot less wiggle room and up and down than out. Real simple. Um, system warming up. On this um, particular remote, you'll have your, um, it'll have GPS written up the top. That means you're safe. So GPS is slang for safe <laughs> in drone language. Um, then you'll have your satellites. So we've got 14 satellites. We've got 19 minutes on this battery. Typically, it'll, it'll be 20 minutes. Um, down the bottom here, you've got your distance, your height, and your um, meters per second is your speed on the bottom right corner, okay? So that's how that operates. To calibrate the drone, you're just gonna, your uh, left toggle, hold down, rapidly pressing the button with a home on it. It says compass calibrate now. You can see compass calibrate that means it's time to do the, the disco dance so you'll see that the boomerang is dancing it's bouncing sorry it's flashing you do your circle that's solid now you can see it's solid you then turn it up solid so that's now calibrated this is home for the condor See, that's why you went anti-clockwise. Yes, yeah. So, I've done it both ways, no problem, but anti-clockwise gives me a better GPS. Do not ask me why, I've asked the technician. He can't, he's like, just do it anti-clockwise. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, anti-clockwise on the front. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can do it both, I was just saying, you can actually do it both ways. Like anti, I just noticed, same time. I've, I've had better, better reception on the anti-clockwise So I get messed up when I've got both drones up because that one's clockwise. Oh, I see you. Uh, uh, look like you're having um, an episode on the beach sometimes. Um, cool. So we'll, we'll get this one up and yeah. flying. And then um, I'll demonstrate. I'll just have this hovering up above us. If we can get one of our sets with the hooks, the sinkers. 
actually use this one. Put this one out. So on this particular drone, this is return home. So on our FD1, it's the middle switch. This is the return home button here. When you press it, it'll make a tone saying that it's coming back and it'll say return on the top. Um, this button here on the A20 means nothing, basically. On the A22, this is your drop the bait. Same as our switch on the FD1. This is what's gonna release the circuits, okay? Um, cool, let's get home out. The other thing, the other thing with this is, yeah. a lot of people mistake the boomerang as the front of the drone, as the back. Alright, a lot of people put it facing this way, go up and then push backwards. So, yeah, that's the back of the drone. You have your wires facing the beach. Now with the um, A22 model, you'll get given a special set of wires. On one end of the wire, there's a smaller circle than on the other. The smaller circle goes to your drone. The bigger side goes to your sinkers, all right? Just the FYI. I was talking a little bit about the GPS stability. I wouldn't do that on the FD1. With the Condor, I do trust how they sit a bit better. So that's on there like that. I'll demonstrate the two Same as the A20. This one just has the benefit of both wheels. That gust of wind, good, uh, good little uh, demo there. If you feel the gust of wind, let the drone sit for a bit longer then bring it down. Good timing. Is this the earlier one? Is this the earlier one or is this the later one? 
Um, so this, no, that, that's, that's not, not the main difference. Um, so this is the biggest model, well, as in like bit more distance, bit no, more um, right, okay. capacity, and bigger camera. So this one, what, how we kind of class these, if you're a fisherman wanting to just fish hard and want a camera as well, FD1 all day long. But if you're, if you're keen on the videos, you're keen on a bit of photography uh, and a bit of control over your camera, this is the way so to go. You've got a 4K camera and it's got the 3X camera. So that's got the camera. Yeah. Um, the other thing with the SD4 that's different is the SD1. The SD4 is the thing called boat mode, so you can land it in the water and film underwater. This one? Yeah, and you can move it around almost like it's a remote control boat. So it could actually go under the water or just on the water? No, it's. Oh, because it sits on the water but the camera's under it. Yeah, yeah. But you can steer it around. So if you put a barely up as a scenario. Put a burly out and you want to just check if there's anything on top of it. Yeah. Theoretically, you can steer that thing to sit on top and you can turn your camera to have a look. Oh, yeah, there's fish on top of the burly. Just drop it there. I mean, that's just a fisherman talking there. But, yeah, yeah. Um, but that, I mean, there'd be a lot of. So other this is all day long. Well. So this is 2K lift, is it? Yeah, 2K Gs. Same. I think that one's 2.5. Serious. Two and a I mean, unless you're. There's a distance between the two, setting them out. So. Um, so this one's 1500 yeah. and I think this one's five, five kilometers. So, um, so you're talking, I think you're looking between the 2k and 2.5k for this one. Um, depending on the packages, there's a few different packages and that's before you even get to Rod and Reel. So you're looking at that kind of package price for that. For this one here, you're looking at around that 4k mark, $4,000. Yeah. And so, and that's because of the uh, distance. Um, the other thing with this one is it's got the aerials that can loosen them off. One can be down. So if you're doing sets that are quite high, aerials down. If you're doing sets that are um, quite far, you go aerials up. If you're doing sets that are a bit of both, one up, one down. So that just gives you a lot more access to the drone with the GPS, and that's why it can go five kilometers. Um, but if you're if you're a fisherman. Um, how I kind of put them into their own categories, you spend just about $2,000 on the camera on this one. If you don't really want to worry too much about the camera being high quality um, and you want to catch fish, this is more than enough. Um, I've tested that thing to the, to the hilt. I've put that through a whole lot of strain. I've put out big baits like, like we saw today. I've taken out winches with it. No stress, hasn't skipped a beat. When I want to capture good photos and videos though, this is the bad one to use. So that's how you kind of put them into their own little worlds, own little categories. What's the camera on this one? The uh, this one's 1080p. Yeah. Yeah, 1080p, and I think it's 30 frames per second. Um, so it's still wide end. Yeah, and it's still yeah. very nice, like good for um, someone who's not a photographer, that's what you no. mean. If you're just wanting to capture a bit of the sky, uh, a bit of a setting of where you were that day, nothing wrong with you. Um, but if you're wanting that, want to zoom in on you with a big fish on the end of the line, you're like, oh, it's a good one. Yeah. This is the way to do it. Just to yeah. prove to your wife you're actually fishing. <laughs> yeah. 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 And if, if you're really yeah. desperate to improve the family, you just have the boy, one of the boys on the other end going like this. <laughs> yeah, that's a big one. Uh, Where are you? Yeah. Can't you see? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so that's, that's a breakdown. What's that? Um, so for the A20, you're looking at $1,300 without um, rods, reels. With the um, the mechanical release, eighteen hundred. For the with the mechanical. Oh, mechanical yep. Oh, yep. Sweet. There you go. Fifteen hundred. They're all with one battery. Yes. Yeah. And and a spare battery for the Condors is one eighty. One eighty. Oh, I'm pretty sharp for a guy that's only been back in the shop for a couple of weeks. I just tested you with four. <laughs> for the four. Um, just grab 20 of them. No, no. Um, you're wondering about the, the battery price? Um, the battery price about 450? Yeah, 459. Yeah, so um, you can sort of see how they all sit in their different kind of batteries. One other benefit to the uh, SD4 is the battery on this one is basically, you open this up, it slots in here. You clip that back up, turn this over. And you're done. Whereas with that one, as you saw, there's a little bit more fiddliness to it to get the battery in and tight. So 
that's one thing about the SD4 that they've, they're really starting to smarten up on is how they put the batteries in now is so much quicker and it's still waterproof. Um, yeah. In case they real, they're gonna start it, they're gonna be um, they're bringing their lens in, eh? <laughs> they're gonna need them. Okay, we might start pulling this thing in. Yeah, any other questions? I can, um, what I'll do is I'll get this coming in if somebody wants to um, sit on the end of this just to keep an eye on it. So that's our demo done for the day. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to see more of our videos and subscribe to our newsletter if you want to come along to one of our demos. Thanks for watching.